several uh, places, particularly in Ilohanda, with uh, which I'm intimately related. Eh, kahit hindi naman din declaring heritage zone, parang uh, national treasure lang, at uh, linalagyan ng track, eh, binibigyan naman ng, uh, ng um, bondo. Um, are there any additional advantages to the declaration of a heritage zone in the uh, city of Karkar? Um. Hello, Chair. Good morning. I, I can offer to answer the question of Senator Marcos. Yes, go ahead, Jer Jeremy. This, this is Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, Senator Marcos, just to answer your question, um, the major difference would be that there will always there will already be an established legal framework for the uh, uh, for the convergence of various agencies and the relationship with the local government. Um, if NHCP or National Museum were to declare specific sites, uh, that's not necessarily an automatic uh, thing that will happen. So here, there's already a framework um, proposed uh, to be mandated. Uh, so uh, the, the short answer to your question is it would facilitate the necessary work to get uh, tourism development, cultural preservation, and local government support all in place uh, at the same time. Uh, that's my view on the, on the matter, ma'am. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jeremy. And uh, yes, we understand that there will be some kind of framework that will uh, oblige the convergence of various agencies, including the DOE, as well as the NHCP and uh, the local government as well. What we are concerned with is that there's adequate financing to back up this um, auspicious declaration of a heritage zone. Sayang lang yung atas kapag hindi natin mapupondohan. Uh, kung uh, tutuusin sa susunod na buwan, budget na ang papasukan natin. In which case, uh, meron na ba tayong na-propose na line item sa budget kahit wala pa itong batas na to? Kasi malaki-laki na rin ang suporta ng NHCP, pati na rin ng NCCA sa iba't ibang lugar na may historical sites. Meron na bang uh, tulong na maibibigay kaagad-agad dito sa Karkar? Uh, maybe the NHCP, Alvin, and uh, NCCA, okay. baka may alam kayo tungkol dito kasi lagi kaming abala Diyan sa mga heritage, marami tayong deklarasyon, uh, pero wala namang ibibigay na pera. Yung World yes. Heritage Site po namin, yung Pawai Church, eh, gusto nga namin i-delist noon. At nagtatampo kami doon sa mga deklarasyon ng UN, wala namang palang uh, karampatang pondo. So perhaps you can uh, guarantee us that some kind of funding support will also be extended. Ma Madam Senator, uh, Mr. Chair, um, yun po, ahead, po. Yun, yun, yes, yes, sir. Yun po yung uh, isa sa maging, naging problema namin. In fact, in the NEP po na binigay sa amin ng DBM ngayon, all our capital outlays ay nawala po. Uh, sa proposal po namin for 2021, actually we, we requested funding for Santa Maria Church, but pagpasok po ng NEP namin, wala po kaming capital outlay. Well, I, we understand, of course, because of the um, pandemic we are in. In fact, this year, some of our funds also for, for, for the capital outlay were returned or reverted for the Bayanihan Tuilas 1 Act. So, yung po yung naging epekto. Uh, of course, dito po para sa car car, we have not yet proposed for 2021, but I, I'm just laying down the cards po that for 2021, all our capital, out, we have actually zero capital outlay for 2021. Yun po, Ma'am Ma Senator, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's right. Uh... Alvin and uh, Mr. Chair, yun nga yung concern ko. We'll be raising expectations on duly. Baka masyadong na-disappoint si na Mayor uh, at uh, ang ating mga kaibigan dyan sa Karka kapag uh, hindi natin natulungan. Yun lang po. Otherwise, full support in the effort of Congressman Gulias and the local government officials that finally Karka be recognized as a heritage zone. Thank you, Senator Aimi. Uh, just to pursue uh, Senator, uh, Senator Aimi's uh, point earlier, uh, Mr. Alvin, uh, sabi niyo kanina na natapyasan o natanggalan kayo ng pondo uh, because of COVID. Of course, fighting COVID is uh, the priority right now. 
But on a larger scale, what will be the impact of that uh, removal to our heritage sites? No, because uh, those funds are used to maintain and even promote those heritage sites. But uh, removing that, we might have some problems in maintaining those sites. No, so ano pa magiging impact doon sa removal ng pondo? Um, Malaki yung impact, Mr. Chair, um, but uh, we will appeal pa rin po sa DBM. Uh, in fact, they, we are writing them right now. We wrote them to for the for an appeal no, para po ibalik yung mga ibang uh, uh, budget for capital outlays, specifically for restoration of uh, heritage structures. Um, kung mawawala po yan, probably po ang next step namin is to reach out to the respective local government units. Baka po sila mayroon ding may bibigay. On the other hand naman po, um, of course, we will continue to provide technical assistance as much as we can. But of course, uh, very limited po ang kaya ng NHCB pagdating po doon, Mr. Chair. A ano, ano yung mga concrete examples? No, For example, name three sites that will have... Uh... Uh, that will negatively be impacted by the removal of the funds uh, so that we can visualize your top of mind, top three uh, impact on the removal of the funds. Well, um, for next year po kasi, specific po yung nabanggit ko po kanina, we requested funding for Santa Maria Church kasi meron na po siyang, the BBM po kasi is asking for uh, detailed engineering studies that we have already developed. So, meron po kaming detailed engineering study for that church. We also have detailed engineering study for um, other churches as well, no? Um, ang top of mind po na maapektuhan doon, syempre po, um, uh, yung, yung, yung uh, pagkasira niya, hindi natin ma, ma, maasasawata, no? Ma medyo maapektuhan siya, no? We'll probably wait a few more years to, for, to get some funding. So, for the meantime, siguro what we can do is, so, to provide them with some technical assistance on how to at least maintain, no? Huwag lang mapabilis po yung deterioration. As of now, meron naman po kaming mga technical team, meron po kaming restoration team that, that can provide them some, um, some advice on how to preserve, no? Kahit po hindi lang magtuloy-tuloy yung pong pagkasira ng mga ating mga heritage structures. Mr. Mr. Chair? Uh, go ahead, Senator Nancy. Uh, de, siguro tatanong ko lang, how much was taken out? Um, I'm I'm sorry, Miss Ma'am Senator. I'll I'll check. I'll can I get back to you po. I um our I'm, I'll just check po yung aming budget for uh, next year. I think about 300 million was taken out. All of these were capital outlays. I, I I'm not so sure about the figure. Year or Senator, for sorry. this year? For next year? For, or for 2021 this year? po. For 2021. But for 2020. For 2020, more than 100 million was was reverted for the Bayanian to Hilas one. So, Mr. Chair, can we just request for submission an itemized report kung ano yung yes, apektado yes. dun sa 100 million na in a less for 2020 budget and then ano yung maapektuhan for the 2021 budget. Yan lang po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nancy. And uh, uh, Mr. Alvin, please submit to us the uh, yes. uh, budget that were uh, removed, uh, the amounts yes, that were removed, and then also the projects that will be uh, affected uh, in yes. short, yung pagtanggal, marami tayong mga heritage sites na hindi mamimaintain. Y yan ba yung inyong uh, sinasabi kanina? Po, yes po, Mr. Chair, mawawalan po kasi ng pondo. Yun po yung source namin. I am sure this is not only true in our case. I think this is also true with other cultural agencies. I, I think, I, I don't know, maybe Director Barnes as well, pinamaan din po sila. Pero yun po, I'll, I'll give the committee po a copy of the budget that worked, which last last year and the budget that was affected for next year. My fear lang kasi some of these cultural sites are uh, quite um, uh, matatagal na at needs a lot of maintenance. And uh, the reason why we're doing this is to maintain it and preserve it for the next generation. But uh, if you don't preserve it, uh, we might lose uh, uh, that heritage site or at least a, a substantial portion of that site. So that's why it's uh, Senator Nancy is asking for a list also yes. of the sites that will be affected. No? Yes, uh, Mr. Alvin, just to pursue the topic on hand, uh, itong, I, I know for a fact that uh, there are two ways of declaring uh, an area a cultural heritage, a cultural heritage to zone. Now there's administrative and by legal, uh, by legislative fiat. Um, ano po ang difference nitong dalawa no in your uh, knowledge um, um 
this is not the first time po na merong meron pong nak, uh, uh, house bill no to declare a cultural zone no meron na po mga previous uh, case like this uh, in the case po ng NHGP, we also have uh, we also declare po no na meron pong um, power ang NHGP to declare heritage zones Ang uh, siguro ang kaibahan po nito, minsan po mahirap ding implement on our end sa NHGP kasi po kailangan namin ng counterpart na na, na uh, ordinance or, or or batas dun sa local government unit kasi we have to get their of course their support para po maprotektahan ito. The difference being dito po sa house bill na to kung magiging batas po siya, eh mas maganda po yung suporta kasi po batas ito eh. So mandato, man, mandated po yung mga LGUs and all the stakeholders to preserve, no? And like po kasi kapag kami lang nagde-declare, minsan wala pong suporta. And we, in fact, uh, Director Barnes knows this and members of our board, minsan po we're having second thoughts on declaring particular site as a heritage zone kasi kung yung pong mga LGUs hindi naman sila supportive kung ayaw naman po nila, so wala rin po. We cannot enforce it. Yun po, Mr. Chair. So in other words, um, uh, uh, dun sa sinabi nyo, for, 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 well, later on, no? uh, we'll deal with that uh, later on. But in this case, kasi I would assume that uh, Mayor Apura, who's here with us uh, uh, through his um, city legal uh, administrator, is supportive of this measure. So you have both the local and the national supporting the same side. Um, in in uh, Gusto ko rin malaman, ano? in, in declaring a site, there is there are minimum requirements or at least minimum uh, uh, items that you need to fulfill. Ito bang uh, batas na ito has fulfilled those minimum requirements? Um, Mr. Chair, ano po, um, siguro po we have to look, um, meron po kasi kaming survey na rin na ginawa sa car car, no? uh, sa LGU po ng car car, and we found out that there are of course a lot of uh, heritage uh, structures, old houses, uh, American period and Spanish period colonial houses that are existing, still existing in the place. Of course, yung pong uh, church, uh, heritage church, the beautiful church. We also have the monument of Leon Quilat in the area. And of course, yung pong uh, on, the, in the, on the cultural side, yung pong kanilang traditions, yung kanila pong mga yung pagkain dun sa car car. No? So yun po yung mga tinitignan ng NHCP para po makonsider siya. No, this is also uh, the same um, lens that we're using para po declare yung ibang mga sites, no? Or for so, possible declaration of ibang sites. Mr. So, Chair? Yeah, yeah, Center, Center Binay. Natanong ko lang kay Mr. Asit, meron na ba kay cultural mapping for car car? I'm not so sure, ma'am. Uh, cultural mapping po usually is done by the NCCA or through the NCCA or usually po the LGU themselves uh, conduct the cultural mapping. NHCP po, we do not, we are because... not uh, the one... Pero kasi di ba dapat yan yung magiging isa sa basehan kung pa, uh, paano siya madideklara isa bilang mm, isang cultural ma- zone kung wala apa. tayong, I mean, ma- mahalaga na, na kumbaga na identify na dun sa lugar na yun kung ano yung mga cultural properties na ma-attribute yes, dun sa lugar na yun. What we do have, Ma'am Senator, Mr. Chair, is a list of all the heritage structures, uh, historical buildings, historical sites in Karkar. Yun po yung meron kami. I think the other cultural agencies, they have their own specific list. Tama po yung tanong nyo, Ma'am Senator, yung cultural mapping. Yun po yung critical dito. Uh, cultural mapping is, uh, we, 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 we participate in the mapping process, pero po yung cultural mapping itself ang naggagawa po niyan ng NCCA. So, NCCA po. Ma'am Chair. As NCCA, if they have a, this cultural mapping for car car, NCCA, um, represented by uh, the Executive Director, Al Ryan Alejandre. Hi, Chairman. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning uh, As of now, Chairman, the City of Car Car Cebu is requesting uh, to NCCA for having the cultural mapping. So, the request is not Hello. Yes, yes. Uh, we can so, hear wala pa, wala pa. Hindi wala, yes, wala po, pa kayong ginagawa. They are uh, requesting from us for for, uh, for a cultural mapping pa. Kay LGU meron na. 
putol-putol po kayo ma'am, hindi po ka. Uh, uh, yung ano po, yung uh, car-car po, nagre-request pa lang po ng cultural mapping po sa... Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, since yung, since yung NCCA wala pa, baka yung um, LGU merong existing cultural mapping because I think it's very important na meron tayong ganong data. Kasi, I mean, ano yung magiging basihan for a declaration when parang wala tayong inventory of... Um, What's in car car? For it to be declared as a cultural zone. I mean, I'm supportive of this bill. Had. Kailangan lang natin siguro malaman yung mag magiging pasihan pag pinasa na natin ito. Charles. Sir Terbinay. Oh, oh. Sorry ha, pinutol kita. Kasi yung sa akin na pagdarek. So wala pa, no? Uh, agre okay. Sige. Si uh, Charles, uh, if I... Meron kasing question. I think si Mayor Ata wants to speak. Oh, uh, may, yes, Mayor Apura, you're recognized. Uh, Senator Binay, uh, Mr. Chair, good morning. This is Rogelio T. Montes Carlos, City Administrator. Uh, we've learned that uh, you're asking for the uh, heritage inventory. Uh, culture of map, culture map. Uh, I, I think it is already embodied in uh, our municipal ordinance number 10-05, uh, dictating all the necessary, uh, yeah, uh, an ordinance declaring certain building structures monuments and sites in the municipality of Karkar as towns, heritage monuments, sites, and zones, and creating the Karkar Cultural Heritage Conservation Council and other purposes. Nandun na lahat ang mga, uh, uh, mga items na we're dreaming of to be declared as a uh, heritage uh, site. Under uh, specifically on section three, nandoon lahat, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, uh, section three, declaration of heritage zones, monuments, and sites without prejudice to those heritage monuments and sites to be declared or declared by the National Historical Institute as national shrines, national monuments, national landmarks, all structures located in the municipality of Karkar, which are 50 years old or more in existence and conform to the definitions set in Section 2 of this ordinance are hereby declared heritage monuments and sites. In particular, the three watchtowers of Inayagan Toyom and Baksihi of Barangay Ocaña, the acacia trees lining in the National Road in Barangay Perros, Rotonda and Keox, and the old cemetery in Poblacion Tree. It is also hereby declared as heritage zones, Barangays Poblacion 1, Two and three. Population one streets, Jose Rizal Street, Upper Jaraluna Street, San Vicente Street, the Church and Municipal Plaza, San Jose Street, P. Basque Street, C. Noel Street, F. Noel Street, and Fraternidad Saint Street, Population two streets, Jose Rizal Street, Santa Catalina Street, Lower Jeruna Street, Borgo Street, Plaridel Street, Rosario Street, La Libertad Street, Poblacion 3 Streets, Pinilla Street, Upper Portion of Hawaiian and Dap Dap. The use and preservation of the above declared monuments, sites, and zones as far as practicable, shall always be the concern of the municipality of Karkar. Thank you, Mr. Chair.
Thank you. Thank you, City Admin. Senator Binay. Uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, again, to Mr. Alvin of the National Historical Commission, no? under your guidelines, no, you, you have a guideline, uh, guidelines on the identification, classification, recognition of historical sites and structures in the Philippines. And you have uh, six items in your criteria. No? You have a set of criteria. Um, ito ba, Mr. Alvin, uh, the car car, has it fulfilled the items in your guidelines? Um, I'll, I'll, let me get back to you, Mr. Chair. Um, Siglit pa. Well, you uh, get back to us. Uh, let me get uh, uh, some comments from Mr. Jeremy Barnes of the National, uh, of the National Museum. Jeremy, any comments on uh, the bill at hand? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, just like uh, my colleague said, uh, we attended the hearings on this uh, measure in the House, and uh, we took the opportunity to express our full support. Um, uh, we didn't submit a written position paper, uh, merely a verbal manifestation such as this one. But I do remember uh, raising the primary concern of the road widening of the Cebu South Road, uh, which threatens all of, all of the heritage towns uh, south of uh, Cebu, uh, Metro Cebu, all the way down to Argao and Santander. Um, and Karkar is very much uh, uh, a leading municipality uh, that we're concerned with uh, in this uh, southern uh, road area. Um, and so uh, we were raising the prospect that maybe uh, neighboring municipalities uh, south of uh, Metro Cebu could um, uh, climb up aboard the same kind of measure, um, although Karkar is particularly rich uh, in heritage. And so we were just uh, uh, broaching the idea of the provincial government uh, trying to bring the various LGUs together so that uh, in Congress you can tackle the, a larger um, a larger concern uh, composed of a string of LGUs uh, uh, in that area. Um, that was my main comment, but it's indisputable that Karkar is particularly uh, rich in historical and artistic resources. Um, we have let NHCP take the lead when it comes to um, uh, the buildings and the church and uh, we, Naman, have uh, taken the lead on um, uh, on the artistic heritage. Uh, so many of the uh, renowned Cebuano artists um, uh, originate in Karkar. Uh, Romulo Galicano uh, comes in immediately to mind, as well as his uh, mentor, Martino Abellano. These are artists that have left um, a legacy uh, of artistic uh, and creative um, industry uh, in Karkar, of which the Cebuanos are very proud. And so we would like that to be fostered and sustained. Uh, and uh, just like what Alvin said, we don't have budget to directly apply, but we have all the technical assistance we can muster in terms of um, archaeologists, some architects, some conserva uh, conservation scientists, and then, of course, our botanists and zoologists, if, if we go into that aspect. Thank you, sir. Don't forget, Jeremy, the uh, pride and joy uh, product of car car, the chicharron. Lechon. The lechon and the chicharron, lechon. which I always buy whenever I'm in Cebu. Yes, absolutely, sir. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeremy, you used a very powerful description earlier, indisputable, no? Um, can you elaborate on that? Why do you think that this is an indisputable? Uh, it's indisputable that car car should be... Uh, declared as a natural historical uh, zone? Well, it, it seems, I don't have all the materials at hand, uh, Senator, but um, it was a, a very prosperous town. When Cebu had a railway, it was the southern end of the uh, railway. Danao was the northern end. Um, I think it was a very prosperous town and the, you know, the leading citizens or, or, or all the townsfolk really, uh, banded together to make their town especially beautiful. 
uh, starting with the church, the dispensary next to it, um, the rotonda in the center of, of town, uh, decorating it with all kinds of statues, gazebos, uh, fountains, if I, I'm not mistaken. And they took great pride in, in the beauty of their houses um, to an extent that you, you don't see everywhere. Uh, you, uh, so uh, I'm not sure if it's by luck or through continuity of municipal pride through the generations up to today, but these have re remained largely intact. Uh, so it's a special place, for sure. Thank you, thank you. Um, we want to hear comments from uh, the NCCA, uh, represented by the ED, Mr. Al Ryan Alejandre. Good morning, Any comments Chair. on the bill? Yes. Yeah, good morning, Chair. Good morning to the rest of our resource speaker, Senator Binay, Senator Marcos. Well, Mr. Chair, I would uh, we will give uh, our uh, session our stand from NCCA. Uh, isahin na lang po namin, Mr. Chair, regarding the House Bill number uh, 5643 and 5644, uh, declaring Cagayan de Oro and Carcar uh, City as a cultural heritage zone, respectively pursuant to Article uh, 4, Section 12, Designation of Heritage Zone of RA 166 or the National Cultural Heritage Act of 2009. Uh, Mr. Chair, we commend the author of valuing the preservation and protection of the cultural heritage uh, as the key foundation and driver of the CP and community development. Further, we uh, also find, Mr. Chair, the measure with the uh, tourism uh, development plan, particular with Chapter 4 of RA 9593. Ito po yung Tourism Act of 2009, Mr. Chair, on the establishment of uh, tourism enterprise zone. Po, ito po yung question kanina ni uh, Senator Marcos no, about the funding. Uh, uh, we call it uh, TEZ or TES, the cultural heritage category, where in any area designated as TEZ uh, is given an economic support po, inibigyan po ng economic support. Kung uh, dyan po yung ating uh, category, no? uh, cultural heritage category. This kind of scenario, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ito po yung nagpaparemind po sa atin sa case po ng Iloilo City. If you can still remember declaring last 2013 as Cultural Heritage Tourism Zone where RA po ito ng 10555 fulfilling the requirements po ito ng Section 61 and 62 of RA 9593. Uh, ito po yung creation of the development plan and the administration of, of activities no? So hence, Mr. Chair, may we respectfully propose uh, ito po yung consideration of uh, such provision no, of RA uh, 10555 in the said bill to make them much more comprehensive and sustainable. And I'd like to also uh, to uh, add more with this, Mr. Chair, I'd like to call our uh, Heritage Section Head, Mr. Charles so I'll start to add uh, about our stand from NCCA. Charles, uh, please be recognized, Mr. Chair of Mr. Uh, we recognize Mr. Charles of NCCA. <coughs> Mr. Charles, you recognize. Charles, can you turn on your mic? And then, Basha. I can't hear you, Charles? Mr. Charles. Okay, on your mic, Mr. Charles. Well, anyway, Mr. Uh, Chairman, that is our record. Ah, yeah, okay, Charles, go ahead, Charles. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, can, uh, is there a question? Can you repeat, please? Yes, go ahead. You were uh, re you were referred by uh, Mr. Al Ryan. Uh, to give comment on the on the bill at hand, 
declaring Karkar City as a cultural heritage zone? Hi. Thank you, sir. Uh, we appreciate the uh, bills, but I understand that the intention is uh, to, other than uh, heritage preservation, it's also intended for tourism purposes. Um, we've been working with Tiesa before because there there is a category under uh, tourism enterprise zones, which are cultural heritage in category. And so far, I believe they have not yet uh, made any designation of a tourism enterprise zone of such category. However, we recognize that there recognize that there was a law designating certain areas in Iloilo uh, as a tourism enterprise zone designating uh, uh, DOT and uh, uh, the Heritage Council of the Iloilo City as the corporate entity responsible for developing uh, formulating a development plan and implementing such plan uh, we hope that such model would serve as a basis for improving uh, the bills pertaining to Karkar and Cagayan de Oro because we see this as consistent with the Tourism uh, Act of 2009. Well, those provisions are included in the bill, yes. actually. And uh, it's consistent in two measures. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. We're also joined by... Uh, uh, yes, Senator Mike. Yeah. I mean, yes, Senator I mean, yeah. go ahead. Sorry, just a quick uh, comment, no? Uh, dun sa Chiesa, sana makikisuyo ako sa Chiesa na sana baguhin o review nila yung kanilang mga guidelines for a tourism enterprise zone precisely because they are uh, inappropriate for many of the historical and heritage sites. Unang-una yung requirement ng 5 hectares. E, paano ka naman mahahanap ng 5 hectares sa kalagitnaan ng lungsod katulad ng karta? Tapos may mga evidence of title, samantalang marami dito, e talagang uh, pag-aari ng simbahan. Alam nga so there are many, many uh, uh, provisions and requirements imposed by the TESA in order to establish a tourism enterprise zone that are in act for uh, heritage sites which are clearly in the center of town, belong to the church or to other um, charitable institutions and therefore can never avail of uh, Tiesa's uh, monies. Um, uh, I would uh, just like to uh, congratulate Congressman Gulias for his all-of-government approach. Itong convergence na for the first time in applies uh, tourism and heritage. Pati na rin sa Tiesa kung saan talagang may pera. Hindi po namin naisip yan. Therefore, nagayahin po namin sa Ilocos itong uh, through legislation. Uh, Chair, with your indulgence, I'm going to uh, join the local government meeting. Ang um, huling hirit ko na lang po, uh, I would just like to enjoy the support of my colleagues, uh, both in the House as well as in the Senate, Senator Binay, Senator Gatchalian, for support for the restoration of the line item budget in GAA 2021 for Santa Maria Church in Ilocos Sur. It is a World Heritage Site, one of the pride, uh, one of the prides of, uh, of uh, Philippine Baroque architecture and um, unfortunately because it is so unique uh, as a citadel church it has also been very very badly eroded a uh, walled city address we're looking at yung buong eh kung kaya baka mahulog na lang ito ng tuluyan much mr chair Thank you. Uh, the DOT is to uh, hear DOT. Uh, they're represented by Sec Arturo. You Yusek Boncato. of Wonder Can you uh, use a bong? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you think it's not here, uh, I'm there. Or anyone? Other. Are you uh, from? Uh, are you from DOT? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm the regional director of Central Visayas. 
Mr. Ah, okay. Chair? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Senator Binay. Hindi, gusto ata magsalita ni Kong. Uh, let me just uh, uh, hear a response from uh, the DOT Region 7. And then uh, we recognize uh, Congressman Gullias after. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes. We, we fully support uh, this um, this move. In fact, this is timely because uh, there are um, events and activities that uh, have been postponed this year. Some are international, but uh, there are you know activities like the 500 years which we cannot postpone, and that is uh, a few months from now. Uh, 500 years which really started here in Cebu and uh, Karkar being one of the you know uh, showcase of uh, what we have for our 500 years um, we, we fully support this uh, uh, measure Mr. Chairman thank you thank you uh, we recognize uh, Congressman Gulias first of all honorable chair I'd like to acknowledge with thanks and appreciation the comments of Senator Jaime Marcos. I recall the Senator had the opportunity to visit us and visit the place. And uh, the comments that she made here has been very true and correct. Secondly, I also would wish to thank the Honorable Chair for giving us the opportunity to appear before this committee and present our proposal. May I include, first of all, our sincerest thanks and appreciation to Senator Jaime Marcos. She also has been our guest in, in Karkar and the district. And she knows the area like she knows her own district. I also would wish to thank the other members of the committee for the positive comments in favor of our bill. Honorable Chair, I hope that we will have this chance for Karkar and the neighboring towns of Karkar to be given the opportunity to also shine and present the true facts of the case. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Gulias. Thank you very much for that uh, comment. And indeed, uh... I've uh, been to Karkar many times, um, and uh, indeed, it's one of the most uh, uh, beautiful as well as, I would say, economically productive uh, cities in Cebu. And uh, like I said, I holds a dear place in my heart because uh, um, I fared quite well in uh, the 2016 elections there. Um, we also are joined by the... Um, National, uh, oh, sorry, the Heritage Conservation Society, uh, represented by Mr. Mark Richard Evidente. Any comments, po? Mr. Uh, Evidente? Mr. Members of the committee, good morning. Thank you, po, for extending the invitation to us to participate in this uh, committee hearing. Uh, uh, as, a, as a general rule for this and the other bill, now we are highly supportive of these measures because, of course, we, we, we are very interested and, and 
uh, appreciative when Congress takes the initiative in declaring parts of the country as heritage districts, no? because uh, it, it's a chicken and egg process that, that we feel no? that um, someone has to start the process, someone has to start the conversation uh, para ma, to, ma, ma, uh, mabigyan ng pansin at malagyan ng resources in order to preserve our heritage sites. No? So I think this ties in earlier with, with uh, your question, Mr. Chair, no? uh, what's the difference between the two processes? No? I think the administrative process is more, um, shall we say, stakeholder driven, no? a citizen driven, no? mag applying citizen to have an area declared. No? But the other, the other side, no? kung government driven, then it, then a uh, legislative process is a good way to go about it. No? Um, so I think uh, uh, CAR has done its homework, no? it has a, a territory sites, no? Uh, but of course, more more research will need to be done to to elevate that into a cultural map. More research will need to, more research and planning will need to be done to turn that into a conservation management plan for the zone. You know? uh, but I think that's that that's something that precisely should come out out of uh, passing this bill and turning it into law. Uh, that that the district uh, will have uh, uh, the area rather will have the resources to finally come up with the necessary research, the proper conservation planning, and then that will be integrated with the LGU's plans. No? Kasi minsan yung nangyayari is that uh, we have heritage sites, no? individual sites, individual structures, meron silang plano, pero hindi na-integrate with the rest of the community. No? So I think crucial yan na ma-declare siya zone para yung individual sites uh, ma-integrate yung development plan nila, ma-integrate yung conservation plan, with the rest of the community. So you don't end up having, uh, shall we say, sore thumbs na it, it, we have these very new structures or these very incompatible structures right beside heritage houses or right behind them na nalisira in view. So yan po yung, yung goal ng heritage zoning, no? heritage plan, uh, uh, coming up with the heritage district or heritage zone, that we have a, we have a holistic view on how the zone will be developed and conserved and then a lot of research and a lot more development planning goes into the zone also to manage uh, the, the needs of conservation and development. So yun po, uh, Mr. Chair, no? so that, that pretty much sums up um, uh, our organization's position for the two bills uh, pertaining to the declaration of uh, uh, two, two zones, no? mainly for Cagayan de Oro River and for Carcar. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Mark. I also have a pending question to uh, Mr. Alvin Alcid of the uh, NHCP. Uh, Mr. Alvin, ready na kayo with the answer? Yes, Mr. Chair, with regards to, you're referring, Mr. Chair, to the guidelines of the okay. NHCP. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, yun po, and, um, I think dun po sa batas kasi sa proposed uh, na batas na ito, after it's it became a law, it becomes a law, um, mag magiging kasama po ang NHCP doon sa, sa gagawa ng IRR nito. And that's the time that we will apply po yung mga guidelines na ginagamit po ng NHCP sa iba't ibang mga heritage zones, sa iba't ibang mga declarations na ginagawa. Mr. Chair. Yeah, pero, diba, may, when you declare, there are certain set of criteria that you have to uh, at least fulfill, correct? Yes po. For specific uh, structures po, Mr. Chair. Uh, For specific so, structures, meron po. For car car, ano ba siya? Has it fulfilled those uh, specific uh, criteria? With regards po, Mr. Chair, dun sa mga structures that we declared, yung pong uh, simbahan, yung pong ilang mga heritage houses doon sa car car, because we already declared some heritage houses within the area po. Pero not okay. the whole car car. Yun po, uh -huh. uh -huh. But uh, at least it has the components uh, okay. to become a heritage zone. Yes, po, Mr. Chair. I, that is supportive also of the, the 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 comment earlier of the heritage of Mr. Uh, Mark Evidente. Na yun po, it will really help, no? Kasi po, uh, nandiyan na yung suporta ng uh, stakeholders. It would really help us uh, as well. Uh, NHCP po, matutulungan nila dyan. Pag may po tayong ginagin. But with this, with this law, it will be, the, the whole city will become uh, a heritage zone. So it will um, expand. 
meron pong mga meron pong I, I, I think po no I think uh, I, I don't know about the the members of the committee pero ang tingin ko po diyan uh, meron pong mga zones uh, the whole place is heritage zone but of course we have to balance it yeah. po with development so meron pong mga areas na pwedeng i-develop meron pong areas na ipe-preserve so po meron pong ganun we have to have a middle ground in the development okay. of the the site in of course area. the LGU will play a very big role in uh, yes. zoning no in zoning uh, but itself, um, the city itself, uh, as what I hear from the resource persons uh, and description of Jeremy, indisputable. It's, it's indis indisputable um, that uh, Karkar City is a heritage zone and it has all the components to become a, a cultural heritage zone as a city. So uh, with that... Um, uh, All right. With that, uh, Center Binay, may you have a uh, Center Binay? Uh, do you want to make a motion to uh, approve uh, House Bill Number Five Six Four Four, declaring Karkar City as a cultural heritage zone? Before we approve, I think nandiyan na ata si Mayor Apura of Karkar. Na ba? Mayor, are you there? Baka si we can give her a chance to speak. Uh -oh. Mayor, are you uh, present with us virtually? Yes, Senator. Good morning po sa lahat. Senator Gachalan at Senator, Senator Binay. At sa lahat ng mga, ano, mga congressman at mga resource person. Uh, Mayor, go ahead. You can uh, give your sponsorship speech or endorsement speech. <laughs> At sa lahat nandoon, magandang umaga po sa lahat. Uh, go ahead po, Mayor. You can uh, uh, give comments on the bill. Okay, I'm very happy, Senator, no? Pag, I'm very happy sa bill na yon. Magpasalamat kami sa lahat sa inyo, Congressman Colias, na the one who sponsored that bill. And also sa lahat na kasi yung bill dati lang naming hinihintay kasi ano yon hinihintay sa lahat ng mga karkaranons para makakatulong namin dito for the preservation of the development of the city of Karkar All right, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, Senator Bina, you have the yes, honor sir. of uh, endorsing the bill. Sir, I move that we approve uh, declaring Karkar City as a culture, cultural heritage zone. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Senator, Senator. Bina. Salamat Name? po, Senator Gatchalian. Senator M. I. M. Marcos. Sa lahat nandoon, sa mga congressman. Especially to Sir Eddie Golias. Salamat po sa lahat. Ito yung bill magamit namin para maunlad ang, at makatulong sa turismo sa aming siyudad, sa Karkar. Thank you so much on behalf of the Karkaranons. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, hearing, no objection, the, hearing no objection, the committee is now endorsing House Bill Number 5644, uh, declaring Karkar City as a cultural heritage zone. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Congressman Gulias. Uh, next is we uh, tackle House Bill Number Five Six Four Three. Thank you. Thank you. An act declaring the Cagayan Oro River. And Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, I cannot hear you. Congressman, can you hear me? 
Yes, now I can hear you now. Uh, good morning. Yes, Ngayong buntag, uh, Chairman Win Kachalian. Ngayong buntag, uh, Senator Nancy Binay. And to my uh, to Congressman Gulias, congratulations. And to Mayor Apura, my buntag to all the resource persons this morning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, of, of course, uh, I, I, you have come to Cagayan de Oro City, the city of golden friendship, many times, and you always cross uh, that Cagayan de Oro River, which divide the first district of Congressman Uy and my district, uh, the second district. Now, Cagayan de Oro River, Mr. Chairman, is the, uh, is the uh, uh, area where the uh, initial settlement uh, very early on in our history was uh, evolved. And uh, this uh, river is uh, where also when the Spaniards came in uh, 1622, uh, coming from Caraga, the uh, Recollect Order uh, evangelized our city and they passed through uh, this river going inland and established what is now known as the population of Cagayan de Oro City. Uh, Cagayan de Oro City River is a first-class river, one of the few uh, rivers that are first-class as classified by the DNR. And uh, early on, about uh, 10 years ago, Archbishop uh, Oscar Lidesma, uh, Archbishop Lidesma, Antonio Lidesma, uh, organized the uh, Cagayan de Oro River Preservation uh, Council. And the reason for that is that uh, there are now earth-moving activities in the area there are now poultry uh, production, piggery, destroying the very pristine Class A river of Cagayan de Oro. Uh, secondly, uh, this is uh, Cagayan de Oro River is now the venue of the uh, number one tourist attraction of Cagayan de Oro, the whitewater rafting. And uh, if we are going to pollute that uh, river, there will be no more whitewater rafting. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I am there for... Uh, requesting uh, your uh, committee. I am very happy. This is my first time to be uh, invited to any committee in the Senate, uh, probably because uh, my bills are now with you. And uh, I am thankful that uh, you have asked us to attend. And so therefore, I would wish that uh, this be taken up today. I have heard uh, the resource persons because when they, uh, when they uh, gave their, uh, their comments on the bill, of Congressman Gullias, uh, they always mention also the my bill because uh, they are about cultural heritage, and I have heard them. I have heard them. I have heard NCAA, Mr. Alejandre, Mr. Salazar, Mr. Evidente of the uh, Preservation Society, and the others. And I have with me, and we have with us now the regional director for uh, for uh, uh, tourism, uh, the Honorable. Uh, uh, regional director may on Juan of region 10 and so uh i would therefore just tell uh, re uh request that uh, there has been mr chairman a very good uh, statement of the ncaa about uh, injecting into the bill uh, the tourism aspect and i've heard also the tourism uh, regional director so uh, uh I, I think mr chairman we should be able to take the suggestions of the different resource persons that at the same time, the cultural aspect of the, uh, of the bill, we can already include, similar to the, uh, the Bacol, Iloilo, Bacolod uh, example, will also be uh, a uh, tourism uh, area. And, you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, being the Senate, you know, uh, the Senate can always improve on what we in the House uh, does because, uh, you know, there was a... Uh, a uh, debate between George Washington and Thomas Jefferson on whether the U.S. Congress should be uh, unicameral or bicameral. And you know, Mr. Chairman, what uh, George Washington said to Jefferson, who was for uh, Thomas Jefferson, was for a unicameral assembly like the Parliament of uh, England. And he said, "Why do you put, why do you put your coffee from the coffee pot uh, to the cup?" And uh, uh, and Jefferson answered, uh, "To cool it." Precisely, according to George Washington, the 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 the, the heat, you know, the turbulence uh, of the house will be through maturity be improved by the Senate. So that is the statement of George Washington. So that's that's a need for the Senate. However, 
Speaker Tip O'Neill, Mr. Chairman, and Speaker Newt Grinchett said that it is a misnomer to say that the House of Representatives is a lower house. The only reason it's called lower house because when the first Congress of the United States started in uh, New York at the Federal Hall, the Senate went to the first floor and the House went to the second floor. So according to Newt Greenrich, your, uh, your honor, uh, the House is the bigger house and you are, your honor, the smaller house. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, thank you, uh, Senator Rufus. Uh, every time I listen to you, you never fail to uh, enlighten me and educate me. Uh, my first question to you, uh, Congressman Rufus, yung mga libro ba ninyo sa likod nyo, binasa nyo lahat yan? Uh, well, hindi pa talaga. Because, you know, Mr. Chairman, to tell you, I have the three, I think, the biggest uh, collection in the country because I've done this when I was still a student. No? The left side, Mr. Chairman, is about about history, history of all, almost all the countries of the world here, history. In the middle, Mr. Chairman, are biographies of this Riley, Gladstone, uh, Roosevelt, all the uh, great people of the world, including Yasser Arafat. And on the right side, Mr. Chairman, is war, Gira. I have all the, the wars of Stalingrad, Leningrad, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Flanders fields, uh, in, uh, in uh, France and uh, everywhere, Mr. Chairman. So these are the three collections that I have, Mr. Chairman. But Thank you. Uh, in indirect answer, not all have been read, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kong Rufus, because whenever you're uh, on TV, uh, it amazes me uh, to see all your uh, books, your collection of books behind you. And I always listen to your interview. Yung books behind me are all virtual. Hindi ho totoo in akin eh. No, sa inyo ho totoo. But you have everything already in your mind, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> with, with you. <laughs> thank, thank you, Kong Rufus. And um, we will uh, proceed with the hearing of the said uh, bill. Uh, we will start off with, um, of course, NHCP again, uh, represented by Deputy Director Alvin Alcid. Any comments on the uh, uh, bill on hand, Mr. Alvin? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, Good morning again, everyone, uh, Senator Binay, Congressman uh, Gulias. Um, archaeological, uh, may I read, Mr. Chair, the position of the NHCP on this matter? Um, archaeological studies have confirmed that Cagayan de Oro River was the site of thriving pre-colonial shoreline communities. The river also witnessed one of the major victories of the Philippine Republican Army against the U.S. forces through the Battle of Makahambus Hill of June 4, 1900. This was recognized by the NHCP when it installed on June 4, 2000, the historical marker, Labanan sa Burol ng Makahambus at Makahambus Hill, Barangay Bayanga, a riverside community. Thus, the NHCP is uh, supportive of this bill, Mr. Chair, as we did during the hearing at the House of Representatives. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Alvin. Talagang matipid kayo magsalita, you know? <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, uh, Kong Rufus. Thank you for recognizing me again, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Alcid uh, for reminding us that indeed, uh, archaeologically, the UP uh, uh, group of archaeologists and also the Cultural Center, and I see Mr. Jerry Bar Jerry May Barnes here, they found in the slope of uh, Upper Cagayan de Oro, not the Poblacion, because that was a transferred already. The first settlements were really upper, that is uh, almost across the old airport and there we had a lot of uh, obsidian glass some bones and some art some uh, small artifacts that were found in that area because the Cagayan de Oro river was really where the early civilization of Cagayan de Oro started so the first point to Mr. Alcid thank you for that the second one is the battle of Makahambos cave and of course your uh, marker there is very clear for all and you know Mr. Chairman uh, this is one of the first victories of Filipinos against America, because here nine Americans died and one was captured, and no Filipino of General uh, Capistrano and Apollinar uh, Velez uh, was even hurt in that area. It was an ambush, and the uh, Americans died there. So uh, historically, uh, we have two: the early settlement and also the Makahambus Cave, and that is why when things become uh, already settled in this country, I'd like to invite the source persons first to see the, the site of that uh, first settlement and then Macambus Cave, if they have not yet seen it. And then, of course, 
I will treat you all to the white water rafting. All, almost all the con congressmen who went there for hearings had been able to go there as I host them. So my standing invitation is I hope we get a vaccine so that we can all be together and uh, we will invite all our resource persons if you have not yet done so because many have already done it, including Senator Wynn, you have been there, correct? And Senator Binay to the white water rafting, our number one, our number one tourist attraction, correct? Yes, Senator Rufus, we will uh, take your invitation <laughs> after the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> me you. and Senator Bina and Senator Marcos will uh, uh, definitely schedule and try out your world-renowned uh, white water rafting. I have to admit, I've been to the one in Davao, but never to the one in Cagayan River. So uh, okay. we will take up your invitation once uh, uh, a vaccine is ready uh, uh, in our country. Our pleasure, uh, Mr. Chairman, our pleasure. Thank you, thank you. And uh, your wealth of knowledge in history is really amazing. Sabi ko nga sa staff ko, Kong Rufus, walking history book kayo eh. No, from uh, Fil Filipino-Chinese history to the history to the American war, talagang kabisado niyo ho yan. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we also want to hear uh, from NCCA, Executive Director Ryan S. Alhandre. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Gachalian. Uh, again, mayung buntag ka natong ganan, uh, Senator Bina and Senator Marcos, as well as our Honorable Congressman from Cagayan de Oro, ang amuang silingan. <laughs> I'm from Davao GD, sir. I'm a former councillor from Davao. Yeah. Ah, hello. Congressman Rodriguez yep. and uh, Congressman Julias from uh, Cebu no? and the uh, rest of our uh, speakers uh, from different agencies. Uh, Mr. Chair, we also have seen comment uh, a while ago uh, that uh, the NCCA is uh, uh, supportive on this uh, House bill. Uh, of course, we commend the author for valuing the preservation and protection of the cultural heritage uh, Mr. Chairman, as the key foundation and driver of the city and the community development. Uh, again, ulitin uh, po namin, Mr. Chairman, that we also find uh, measure consistent po yung, yung sa akin sinasabi na tourism development policy po. No? Particular with Chapter uh, 4 of RA 9593 po yung Tourism Act of 2009. Uh, yung sa TSA po yung Tourism Enterprise Zone uh, doon po uh, masasabi po uh, cultural heritage category uh, as mentioned by Congressman Rufus Rodriguez no, that uh, one of the drivers uh, to really uh, make the city progressive is also through tourism and uh, this kind of scenario Mr. Chairman reminds us uh, again as mentioned a while ago yung sa Iloilo po no, yun yung pong ating uh, model so again, Mr. Chair, we are supportive on this uh, item uh, on behalf of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Thank salamat of my buntag. Thank you, Director uh, Alrayan. And in Section 7 of the proposal, and let me just quote, uh, the DOT in, coordina in coordination with the Philippine Tourism Authority, the DNR, the city government, and the other government agency concerned shall prepare the development plan involving preservation, conservation, restoration, and maintenance. So there's a tourism component, which I truly agree, uh, in order to sustain the uh, protection, conservation, as well as promotion, you need some income revenue uh, that is uh, compliant to um, some form of ecological tourism. So um, that's why in, in both laws, CAR-CAR uh, and also in this one, in both proposals, a tourism component is in the bill. And uh, we'd like to solicit some more comments and suggestions from uh, NCCA as well as uh, NHCP to um, probably improve on that uh, provision, whether that provision is ready enough or we can expand that provision to take into consideration the experiences of Iloilo when it comes to uh, tourism promotion. Uh, we also want to hear Mr. from... Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Chair? Senator Bine. Yes. Uh, siguro just um, a comment dun sa provision na yun. Kasi me, well, there are also instances wherein um, conservation and tourism, 
medyo may mga instances na nag nagkakaroon sila ng conflict. And sana uh, since this is a uh, conservation, mas mangibabaw yon kesa dun sa uh, need to generate income. Because at mm. the end of the day, what's important is a uh, conversation, uh, converse, uh, uh, conservation of our culture, di ba? Kasi alam naman natin, may mga uh, pagkakataon na kung saan yung turismo, yung sumisira dun sa heritage sites natin, eh. And sana, laging mas mangingibabaw yung pagpe-preserve ng ating kultura more than the income generation. Yun lang po, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Thank you, Senator Binay. And uh, Senator Binay is the chairman of the Tourism Committee. And uh, that's why she is very knowledgeable and uh, um, she's well-versed in terms of uh, how to balance the tourism revenue as well as conserving our um, uh, heritage zones and cultural zones. Uh, thank you for that uh, suggestion, um, Senator Binay. Um, I think that... that, that, that uh, Comment uh, was widely heard by Congressman Rufus because in his bill, uh, he also put a proviso here, uh, provided that the, that the said development plan shall ensure preservation and maintenance of the Cagayan de Oro River free from threats of pollution, industrialization, and other environmentally destructive activities of man. So, na foreseen ni Kong Rufus yan, and she uh, include a proviso that uh, uh, preservation and maintenance should be uh, uh, above all um, compared to the revenue being generated. Uh, but we will uh, like Center Binay to, uh, to to suggest uh, uh, some more provisions here to make sure that we indeed preserve the beauty and the uh, uh, heritage uh, aspect of the river. Chair, you know? NCCA can come out can come up with um, certain guidelines on how to... I think kasi mas kailangan sila yung lead agency more than the DOT because this is a... Uh, diba, preservation and conservation to ng heritage natin eh. So baka mas kailangan mas sila yung uh, uh, lead more than... Personally, so um, I, I personally am very supportive, and the National Museum for uh, its natural and archaeological mandate um, expresses its full support for, for this bill. Uh, I do agree with Senator Binay, the tourism versus preservation aspect is key here. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, if, if, if that could be strengthened. Um, I think that would be an improvement to the bill, but as, as it stands and as it was uh, approved in the House, um, uh, we fully support this, this uh, text. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, we're also joined by uh, a representative of Mayor Oscar Moreno of the city of the uh, Cagayan de Oro City, uh, Engineer Armen Cuenca. Engineer? Yes. Mr. Uh, committee Chair, uh, Senator Will Min Gachalian, good morning. Uh, also to Senator Nancy and Senator uh, Amy. Uh, also to our Congressman, uh, Sikat Nga Kung Congressman sa Tibo, Pilipinas, Rocos Rodriguez. May yung buntag sa kanon. Hello? Yes, uh, any, any comments po on the bill? Yeah. Uh, 
First of all, the Actuary and the Euro would like to commend the Honorable Congressman Ropos for the landmark, landmark legislation on House Bill Number 5643. However, as far as the city government is concerned, we are limited to our ter territorial jurisdiction, uh, considering that Cagayan de Oro City is merely the receiving end of the Cagayan de Oro River. The uh, uh, Cagayan de Oro River has a total land area of about 138,000 hectares with the uh, headwaters from the two mountains uh, located in Bukidnon, namely Mount Kalatungan and Mount Kitanglad. And uh, uh, more than uh, almost 65% uh, uh, are classified as alienable and disposable, disposable land. Uh, due to the due to Cagayan de Oro River's coverage, the Cagayan de Oro River Basin Management Council, as uh, what uh, Congressman Ropo said uh, a while ago, it was created through the initiative of the uh, uh, Archdiocese of Cagayan de Oro, led by uh, Bishop Ledesma. And uh, this is co chaired by uh, the regional directors of DNR, uh, DILZ, and the Department of Agriculture. And uh, uh, also uh, some members from the NGO and People's Organization. In 2018, the Watershed Management Plan of Cagayan de Oro River Basin was formulated by DNR through the Integrated Natural Resources and Environmental uh, Management Project, or NREM. And the plan described the present state of the river, uh, its vulnerability to hazard, land use, tuning, environmental issues, problems and opportunities, and the proposed management intervention and strategies for the entire watershed or watershed landscape. Also, it, it presents of the improving the quality of life, the people therein, while integrating environmental protection, conservation, and management. Uh, in short, Mr. Chair, uh, House Bill number 5640, uh, should be geared towards the institut institutionalization of the Cagayan de Oro River Management uh, uh, Master Plan uh, in order that uh, this to be taken into consideration for the improvement of and viability of the House Bill Number 5643. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alam niyo, Engineer, sa kahabaan po ng river, ilang po ang nasa Cagayan de Oro? Ilang portion po? Do you have that uh, technical information? Ang kahab kahabaan po ng Cagayan de Oro River, ilang po ang nasa Cagayan de Oro City? Do you have that? Uh... I don't have the data for now, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. okay. Do you know if it's a substantial portion or if it's a little portion? Uh, alam, niyo, alam, niyo ba? alam ko, mahaba ho yan eh. No? Yeah, siguro it's around... Uh... 40% of the of the entire uh, coverage of the river. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, Congressman Rufus, uh, you want to join in? Uh, yes, Kong, uh, you're on mute, Kong. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think it's even more than 40% because the others in Bukidnon will be the tributaries like Bubunawan River and the others. So uh, uh, it's about more than 50% will be from uh, our uh, uh, barangays in the upper uh, area, from Mambuaya, uh, from uh, Bayanga, and then down to the mouth of the river. So more than 50%, Mr. Chairman, would be again because the others from Bukidno are just the tributaries, Mr. Chairman. But Kong Rufus, we're declaring the river irrespective of the political yes. jurisdiction, no? So yes, we're not... That... Okay. That so will be not... down to Bukidno also. That will be down to uh, everyone, Mr. Chairman. So we're not only declaring a specific portion of a river. No, we're declaring the entire river from Bukidnon, that tra uh, from Bukidnon, then it will traverse to Cagayan yes, de Oro City, and then all the way down. No, okay. Yes, right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, we're also joined by uh, uh, the DNR uh, Regional Director uh, Adorab Adorab Adorable. Adorable. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I am representing uh, 
Red uh, atau Rabli Dia uh, lihat di position paper Regarding on the house bill 5614 no? In time to run up the bill in the Kagian de Uno Regular And its immediate environs located at Located in Kagian de Uno City Province of the Sami Surintan, a cultural heritage rule authored by Nordistan of the Congressman of the Supreme Corpus of Riggis. We highly appreciate and strongly support the initiative of the Honorable Congressman to conserve and manage the cultural resources of Region 10, specifically the area cited in the field. We have high hopes that this bill reports, reports ahead to safeguard our tradition and culture and strengthen our cultural roots and values. This office has the following recommendation. In fact, uh, our uh, role, our role in the DNR is only to provide in terms of technical assistance, like the uh, delineation and demarcation of the approved cultural Heritage zone. That's all, Mr. Sir, um, part of the objectives no, is to protect and conserve this river. Now, uh, if you can see from the law, that's uh, one of the most important objectives. Um, my, my question is can we still, uh, ano po ang diferencia, ano ang difference, no? when we declare this as a cultural heritage zone and declare this as a uh, protected area under the NIPAS law. Because the NIPAS law uh, can also declare a specific area, a specific river to be protected by the by the state. So, ano ba ang kaibahan no, nitong batas saka declaration under the NIPAS law? Uh, actually, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the section 32, the DNR, the DNR, uh, this oh, impact states that the NR shall be responsible for the establishment and management of the National Integrity Protected Area System yeah. and the conservation of wildlife resources, including cave and cave resources, and which shall coordinate with the National Commission on Indigenous People. This conservation of natural resources that are cultural sanctuaries of indigenous people. So, iba itong role namin sa DNA as far as the National Integrity Protected Area System and the conservation of wildlife resources. Is there any, uh, what, do you th what, what is the difference? So, no? Because the law also calls for protection and conservation and under the NIPAS law, you can declare, no? DNR can declare through the through a pro presidential proclamation. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, protected area is also declared through proclamation. But can we can we have uh, can we pass this law and still declare it as a protected area under the NIP?
uh, it will be declared as a protected area yes, under the NEPA law. Okay. Because the, the, the DNR is also very much part. In fact, they will be giving yeah. the rules and regulation. So they will also jive it with uh, later on when it becomes uh, also a protected area. The two river bases that we have, Mr. Chairman, which are to be protected because people are also in those areas and they have to be protected against flood, against logging, and all of this against illegal mining, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, I can see also in your bill that the DNR will be the one promulgating the R. Uh, so, yes. in fact, they can harmonize the NIPAS law as well That's as this correct. law. Okay. That's correct, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Kong Rufus. Uh, we also want to hear from uh, the Department of Tourism. Uh, represented by Director uh, Shalimar Tamano and Director Elaine Unchuan. Mr. Chair, um, yes, just, uh, sorry. Um, any one of you can, uh, um, uh, the, the, the river traverses two regions. Uh, we can hear first from uh, Director Shalimar and then Director Elaine. Director Shalimar. And jump up.
labor activities have, has been suspended po uh, pending guidelines. So he wala pa po nag-operate for um uh river rafting. But for the, the Cagayan River as a whole, I believe that that is being taken up po by the Cagayan de Oro River Basin um group po. uh yeah, and I think uh, we are one of the members po but uh, it's headed by the LGU and the NR. Po. Chair, maybe can we just request um, who may existing report na to submit to the committee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, submit na lang sa amin, Director. And I, I think those are valid questions, no? Because, uh, um, uh, for example, uh, Boracay, no? Um, uh, we didn't foresee that it will uh, explode and uh, hordes of uh, tourists from different parts of the world will uh, uh, visit Boracay. Uh, we didn't, never thought of the word carrying capacity. Ngayon lang ho yan na lumalabas in carrying capacity. And uh, that's why uh, the question center Bina is quite valid. And uh, since we are um, uh, declaring this as a heritage zone uh, together in together protecting it, conserving it, uh, we should put all those uh, regulations, not in the law, no, but uh, uh, moving forward in promoting it as a tourism uh, destination. Uh, who regulates that, uh, Director? Who, who regulates the carrying capacity no, for ecotourism? Um, yes, Mr. Chair, I think uh, DNR will be the one to study that. And then um, it's the LGU that actually regulates it. Um, we like for for our industry for uh, whitewater rafting. That's the main activity now at the river, and also I think dragon boat. Uh, we uh, abide by what the LGU uh, will be setting. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I suggest maybe the DNR Region Ten can also uh, comment, and the uh, Mr. Engineer Cuenca might be able to comment regarding the carrying capacity studies. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Engineer Cuenca, can. Uh... Respo please respond to the inquiry on uh, carrying carrying capacity. Yes, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the, our uh, local city tourism office is the one who uh, uh, regulate the uh, water rafting. And uh, as of now, as mentioned by Director Antoine, uh, there is no activity in the river. And uh, uh, the uh, carrying capacity of the river is, uh, I think, uh, that was uh, 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 hello. I can hear you, po, sir, uh, engineer. Uh, the the carrying capacity was observed by uh, the city tourism office, especially the city tourism board. So, meron kayong meron kayong scientifically or scientific-based uh, carrying capacity of the river? You've conducted that. I have no knowledge, Mr. Chair, on that, but uh, I will uh, uh, include that in our position paper. Oh, I hope we have, no? Because uh, the carrying capacity is not just uh, not just uh, taken out of thin air. It's a, it's a, it's a scientific-based... Uh, actually, it's an engineering-based uh, method. So... Um, submit na lang ho sa amin yung, in yung uh, computation and this is in line on uh, balancing uh, between tourism and uh, conservation. No? submit na lang po sa committee. Uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chair? Yeah, yes, Senator Binay. Um, I think yung DNR has a department that conducts studies on carrying capacity. Nakalimutan ko lang kung anong division yun sa DNR pero merong uh, existing office na sila yung talagang gumagawa ng pag-aaral pagdating dito sa carrying capacity. Dito si uh, uh, Regional Director Adorable. Uh, uh, yes. Sir, RD, can you respond to that? Uh, yes, uh, we, we can uh, provide technical assistance to how to conduct the uh, study of carrying capacity. Uh, like, for example, in Jamaican, we have uh, really conducted the training capacity of the ambitious, no? As uh, considering that the field of the community requested us to have the study of the training capacity. So as far as the Cagayan River, Cagayan River, we don't have any study yet. And 
Thank you, thank you. Um, Mr. Uh, Chair? There... Yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to Plus speak... Mr. Mark. Just... Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to speak just on the issue of carrying capacity. No, uh, in my in my professional capacity as an urban planner and tourism development specialist, the uh, the, the carrying capacity of places like Cagayan uh, de Oro, really uh, river, are, are are really ultimately uh, dictated not just by the natural conditions but also by the infrastructure. No? So yun po yung dapat uh, bulin natin. No, uh, and and I think that's where the development plans that would come, uh, co development and conservation plans that would come out as a result of this bill, dapat masagot po yon, no? Uh, because, uh, of, of course, if you add a little development, then the carrying capacity of a particular place increases, but also that also affects the rest of the environmental conditions, no? So dapat dun sa development planning na titimpla how much of the area will be developed, under what conditions, and then also how much of the area will be conserved and under what conditions for. So, so doon po maglalaro yung, uh, yung issue po na ito. So it really devolves on the question of site planning. Yun lang po. Uh, since, uh, since yung mga activities doon are uh, regulated by the local government, uh, the local government should be guided kung ano yung carrying capacity niya para hindi approve ng approve ng maraming operator. Um, because it, if you don't have that, uh, that uh, uh, guidance, uh, of course, it's very tempting to just approve anyone who wants to make money out of the river no? in guise of tourism. So um, it's important that we generate that uh, uh, carrying capacity and I, I totally agree with Senator Binay because that's what we experience in Boracay no and now we have a carrying capacity in Boracay you know uh, there's a limited number of tourists that are allowed to go in so in the same manner with uh, the Cagayan de Oro River uh, Mr. Mark Sino how, how, what's the process of, of determining the carrying capacity uh, should the LGU uh, uh, study that is it uh, the DNR is it a, a body that will but that will do that what is the process um I, I think that would really be a result of the research process done by whoever would prepare the plan no? um in this case not like uh, sorry to return for example for for, for Boracay, no uh the major factor in determining the getting capacity for Boracay, if i remember correctly was simply the space allocation of the white beach no? and that would dictate the the number of people who can comfortably use the white beach no, at, at any particular point in time. No? Uh, in this case, for Cagayan de Oro River, it might be more directed at the moment, no, in, in, given the current level of development, would be maybe more about space and time restrictions, no, that how many boats can be deployed at any one time to make sure that all, all passengers moving down the river are uh are safe no um there there might also be constraints about um the amount of space in your staging area there might also be a constraints around uh parking and accessibility no? so marami pong factors dapat yung nagtitimpla sa uh sa carrying capacity no? but i think the immediate one for Cagayan de Oro River primarily for tourism would be safety no? because ayaw natin yung magbabanggaan yung mga boats Sa matao, okay? um, and, and of course, yung impact on the surrounding environment. That, of course, every boat affects uh, the, the biodiversity of the river. No? So, that's my level. Din po yon. So, there's also a biological study that would be needed. Should that be conducted by the by DNR? In uh, your experience? Uh, um, I think it would ultimately be dictated by kung sino man magiging operator, no? because whether it's the LGU or a private uh, or a result of a public uh, private partnership or totally contracted out, no? dapat may magkoconduct talaga ng ECC dyan. No? So I don't know if there isn't been an ECC because every project, of course, kailangan may ECC, especially in a sensitive area like the Cagayan de Oro River. So that should be an output of the ECC process. Mr. Chair? 
Yes, Center B9. I think diba yung Cagayan de Oro River will cover other LGUs and not just Cagayan de Oro. Tama po ba? Tama, kasi it will, uh, it, it will stretch, uh, I, uh, from what I read, is uh, will uh, stretch from Bukidnon, not mistaken, and uh, flow to uh, Cagayan de Oro City and other provinces. No? It's a whole system. Ilang LGUs kaya? I don't know, hindi ko alam ko sinong may alam. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, Mr. I think uh, Engineer Cuenca is raising his hands. No? Yeah, yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, the uh, River Basin covers five municipalities and uh, two cities. Uh, the municipality of Baongon, Libuna, Antalakag, and Bukidnon, and the city of Cagayan de Oro and Iligan. Mr. Chair, baka dapat national um, agency yung mag-conduct ng study because if it covers um, five municipalities and two cities, kung isa-isa pa silang gagawa, um, una-una, it will be costly and baka hindi rin magtugma yung plano ng mga municipalities and cities. So baka nga dapat, it should be a national government agency who would conduct the study. Well, with the permission of the principal author, uh, we can uh, suggest to include maybe a mechanism where uh, a body will compute the carrying capacity uh, insofar as uh, uh, tourism is concerned and also in line with the protection and conservation uh, so that uh, it will be very clear in the law that the uh, national agency will be tasked to be able to coordinate with all of the uh, LGUs that will be along the river. So uh, after this may be passed, then certainly uh, the DNR being the lead agency will be able to coordinate with them. But as far as this is, this is merely really to be able to make sure that we preserve this as soon as possible because we, we, we destroy it, we destroy the water, the uh, white water rafting and so much other uh, effects of the uh, if there will be no declaration, Mr. Chairman. So uh, this will be subjected to uh, uh, public consultation, definitely, as far as the implementing rules and regulations. Here, here, uh, what are the prohibited acts? All right. Mr. Chair, so, can I say something? Uh, yes, go ahead. Um, yes, Mr. Chair, thank you. Just to give you an idea about our river activities, Mr. Chair, because uh, again, the Oro River is really big. No? There are currently five... Uh, operators of whitewater rafting in the city. And uh, we have um, already proceeded uh, the implementation of the mandatory accreditation. As of now, Mr. Chair, only uh, one outfitter is accredited because they were having an issue with insurance because we were really insisting on the insurance and safety. But uh, we were also uh, uh, trying to uh, mention uh, regarding environmental conservation because the uh, um, outfitters should also contribute uh, and have activities for environmental conservation. And I believe that when when we do have the mandatory accreditation already, we will be able to regulate uh, um, the outfitters uh, in terms of uh, their actions and their uh, number of people uh, that they will be allowing and the number of boats. So that's not that's really not a lot. Uh, but of course, uh, we look forward to the day when um, this will become again a popular sport uh, and uh, there might be also overcrowding of the river. So this is a very good uh, initiative determining, determining the carrying capacity uh, so that uh, we do not uh, become like a barakay uh, with, with what happened. No? But uh, the, at the start, at the onset, Mr. Chair, uh, there's that not many uh, outfitters and uh, if uh, they cannot get accreditation for DOT with all the requirements also including environmental requirements and the insurance, um, they will not be able to operate. So I think uh, uh, it, within uh, the DOT, the DNR and um, the LGU, we can already uh, immediately um, impose the rules on uh, uh, the maximum capacity. But as of now, Mr. Chair, uh, lacking the guidelines of operations for whitewater rafting for the minimum health protocols, we have not uh, still advised them to operate as of this time. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And uh, in the law, uh, DOT and DNR will uh, 
uh, come up with the uh, IRR uh, that will also be the basis for governing conservation and preservation. So it's general enough to cover uh, technical issues such as carrying capacity. No, so we can include that in the IRR later on. Okay. So uh, with that, um, uh, Senator Binay, may I request a motion to approve the said measure? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve uh, uh, declaring Cagayan de Oro River as a cultural heritage zone. Thank you, Senator Binay. Hearing no objection, we uh, hereby approve at the committee level House Bill number 5643 declaring uh, Cagayan River as a cultural heritage zone. And we will now uh, uh, endorse it to plenary discussions. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Congressman Rufus. Uh, really, from the city of Cagayan de Oro and the other uh, areas that will be uh, really be uh, positively affected in this uh, bill, uh, I would like to thank uh, the Mubaan Senator Nancy Binay for the motion. And of course, the Honorable Chairman, who is really meticulous of even having read my bill more than I have. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. And of course, I thank the officials in the national uh, agencies and on our regional and the local level. May I thank uh, Regional Director May Onchuan, Director uh, Arle Adorable, Adorable, and of course, from the city government, Engineer Arman Cuenca. Thank you very much for your support of this bill. We hope to work together to be able to protect this for the interests of our people in our city and our region. of the sponsor the sponsor uh, texted me that he's having technical problems with his internet in Davao so we uh, requested if we could recognize Mr. Rex Victor Puente Puentespina so we recognize Mr. Uh, Vic Rex Victor hello Yes, go ahead, sir. Sir, uh, nakamute naka kayo. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. We can hear you now. Ready na. Okay. Hi. Good morning, Senators. I am Rex Puentespina. I'm the past president of the Philippine Orchid Society. We would like to thank Congressman Vincent Garcia, Garcia for refiling this bill. This bill recognizing the Walling Walling has been filed several times. In fact, it was already approved by the Senate, but never signed by President Aquino, then President Aquino. The Walling Walling is a very prolific genetic material in the orchid world. It was once endangered, but now enjoyed by orchid enthusiasts around the world. It is an icon. I'm sure Senator Nancy Binay is very familiar with the Walling Walling, and we are confident she will support for the approval of the bill. For questions, my colleague, Mr. June Golamco, Mr. J.M. Lakandula, at the Philippine Orchid Society is also online. To, and we have also Ms. Olive Puentospina, based in Davao, to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'd like to uh, recognize me, Barnes. Sure. Mr. Chair. Yes, Senator Nancy. Uh, 
I think na nabanggit ni Rex the si President Aquino did not sign the bill, but I think it was vetoed by the president. Hindi ba? I, I'm not aware if it was vetoed or but it never came into a bill. It it, it was actually vetoed. Uh, it was vetoed. Yes. Uh, okay. It was uh, at that time the bill uh, wanted to declare Walling Walling as the second national flower and the history of it it was during the 15th congress when it was approved by the said congress and senate and it was vetoed eventually by uh, president uh, aquino uh, for the sole reason that it might create confusion uh, among our people so uh, that was the ingest no uh, in summary that is the reason so we would like to explore that uh, that uh, that angle and uh, I would like to uh, discuss that in depth with uh, our experts, uh, starting with uh, Mr. Jeremy Barnes, um, uh, to uh, enlighten us on uh, this measure. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, uh, hello to our other resource persons. Yes, uh, we've um, been uh, capturing this issue since 2011. Uh, when the original bill sought to replace the Sampaguita with the Waling Waling. Uh, and the grounds for that were the Sampaguita is not an endemic species. Uh, it originates from India and in many parts between. It is something unique to the Philippines and, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, in 2011, when asked to comment in the House, we uh, commented that the Sampaguita uh, possesses immense cultural importance you know, in terms of practices, traditions, you know, poetry, literature, and all kinds of things, you know, uh, especially young Sampaguita reads and, and all of that. And it ties us culturally with uh, the region to India and, and, and other parts. So uh, it's not only in terms of um, uh, biodiversity uh, that uh, we, we have to think. So we did advocate, uh, well, we did we did acknowledge the importance of the Waling Waling. Uh, the scientific name is Vanda Sanderiana. And uh, it was The realm of possibility. Uh, but it's also nice to have, um, I think, uh, a national orchid because the Philippines is so famous for its orchids. Here at the National Museum, the father of Philippine orchidology is, was our great director, uh, Eduardo Pisumbing. So, um, and we promote our heritage of uh, orchid species uh, at the Natural History Museum and in our na national herbarium. So uh, we, we're very much behind the promotion of Waling Waling. We regret that it was vetoed under the last administration. Uh, and uh, we hope that it will be reconsidered if it gets uh, that far again. So uh, it has the full endorsement, uh, the bill as refile of the National Museum. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jeremy. Um, uh, I just want to uh, ask you, no? uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, um, if you put the Waling Waling uh, in comparison with Sampaguita, Waling Waling is endemic uh, to the Philippines. Um, 
and it's considered the queen of all orchids uh, because apparently a lot of uh, orchids uh, uh, came from that uh, specific species. also tied up to our colonial past and uh, if you if you notice uh, some congressmen have, have been trying to uh, cut our ties with our colonial past so i'm just i'm just thinking out loud uh, jeremy and you suggest as an expert to replace it because there are history there are also other things that we replaced you know? uh, na our national sport from sepak takraw to arnis you know? uh, it was uh, replaced at one point so it, it, it replacing a national symbol is not it's nothing new. We have done that in the past. So do you think uh, it should be replaced? And uh, Sampagita should be replaced with Waling Waling, um, because Waling Waling has a is endemic and represents our our people. Well, um, yes, certainly we went over all those considerations. Uh, the 1934 proclamation by then Governor. General Frank Murphy, um, we researched into that. And that was part of a series of uh, proclamation, uh, of, of things proclaimed as national symbols. Um, it's quite clear that Murphy issued that on the advice of uh, Filipino experts you know, um, at the time. Uh, On the legends and traditions of the Filipino people. So um, that was the basis, not because it's endemic, but you know because of the because of, you know, of its ubiquity and and uh, its cultural value. As the National Museum, we pay heavy attention to those kinds of things. So we're really reluctant uh, on the basis of um, biological considerations alone to replace a cultural icon. We would rather go for a win-win solution. Uh, I don't think this is colonially like laden. Uh, it just happened to be issued by Murphy, who was very, you know, very popular in his day, very pro-Filipino. Uh, I think. Um, I don't know if it has that color of colonialism, but that's for, of course. Uh, uh, our policymakers to, to ponder. Um, so we were going for a win-win. Uh, we did note that other countries have more than one national flower. Uh, and when there's no real, there's no real um, obligation to just have one. Uh, so that, that was our position. Um, maybe the, the more the merrier, or we highlight orchids because they are special in Philippine biodiversity so maybe they do merit highlighting as a family uh, of, uh, of, of, of species within um, you know flowering plants in general so so that, yeah it's uh, it's an open question sir. thank you Jeremy another another uh, symbol that we replace is uh, the national bird you know, from Maya to yes. Uh, the Philippine eagle. No, so my my point there is there is uh, we have some track record in uh, uh, evolving and changing symbols. Uh, I, I I don't have the the transcript for uh, for this change, but I would assume that uh, uh, as we grow as a nation, we also realize that uh, um, we have a lot of realization, and those realization is reflective or reflected in those. Uh, uh, changes, no. So, but um, th th that's why I, I asked this uh, question because um, 
um, you know, of course, to to uh, remove confusion, as what the veto message said, is to have one. You know? And uh, and if you weigh on those two items or those two flowers, seems to me from my reading that Waling Waling is a, a heavier candidate because of its uh, uh, because it's endemic, and also it represents uh, a lot of the qualities of our uh, peoples. So, but um, I, I know you're uh, trying to, uh, you know, win-win solution is my favorite word. You know? So yes, course, that's why uh, 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 I, I think uh, the author of this bill uh, took your suggestion and um, uh, instead of declaring a national flower, he, uh, he declared a national orchid you know, uh, in this case. You know? So um, thank you, Jeremy. I'll go back to you later on no, for, my, for more discussion, but we want to also hear from uh, NCCA uh, under uh, comments uh, on this measure. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you very much. I'd like also to come in and thank uh, the author of this uh, House Bill uh, number 4952, uh, Representative Vincent Garcia and Roman Romolo. Uh, especially uh, Congressman uh, Vince Garcia. We are uh, in the same district here in the city of Davao, second district. Uh, we've uh, had a chat a while ago regarding this matter. Well, Mr. Chair, uh, our position uh, regarding this uh, uh, House Bill 452, I believe. Uh, uh, I think there is a two uh, two uh, attempt of this last uh, 2004 and 2013 uh, a different version as uh, said a while ago by Senator Binay it was uh, vetoed uh, during the time of the President uh, Aquino. Well, uh, anyway, we uh, we from NCCA we don't have uh, objection in this declaration of the Waling Waling as a national orchid of the Philippines. However, Mr. Uh, Chair, we find it important that this significant of uh, Waling Waling should be articulated in the bill, uh, I think either in section one or in a separate clause uh, between section one and two. The presence of uh, this suggested, Mr. Chair, which may be amply supplied uh, by the government agencies like the NR or the Orchid Foundation. Uh, Mr. Rex Pintispin is a good friend of mine, <laughs> the president of the Orchid Foundation. Nice seeing you, sir. No, it's been a long time. Uh, for the provision will serve as the basis of uh, both the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR, and the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, or NHCP, uh, our affiliate cultural agency. For uh, explaining, Mr. Chairman, to the public, no, sa ating madla, uh, bakit po uh, deserve no way we we will uh, come up with this uh, plan for the national orchid uh, and why not the other species of orchid in the philippines uh dito kasi sa davao mr chairman davao region isa yan sa mga highlight namin during august no malapit na po next month for the kadayawan festival i seated before in the kadayawan foundation as a vice chair Vice Chair, and uh, again, together with a group of uh, Sir Rex Pentespina, uh, uh, ito yung highlight din namin, no? ito yung uh, sa aming agro-fair namin, yung ating mga orchids, especially waling wali So, uh, ang dami kasing species. No? So, and for that, uh, I think uh, we all or also protecting its uh, significant uh, per se, which be natural or historical or any other aspect to appropriate it. So again, Mr. Chair, uh, on behalf of NCCA, we are 
supportive of this uh, House bill. Pero sana, Mr. Chair, makarol lang din natin. Uh, kasi marami kasing species din. No? Baka kasi uh, meron din ibang mga declarations about the national orchids. So that's all, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning. Thank you. Uh, I, I was going to ask Jeremy this, no, but uh, I'll, I'll start off with uh, uh, NCCA kay uh, ED. ED, no, a symbol represents our country. Eh, no? uh, if you have a symbol, like la last week, uh, uh, last week, a few months ago, we approved uh, Balangay uh, um, as the national vote because it represents okay. us, no, as a nation and us as a people. Uh, it has qualities uh, that we find in our peoples that is in that uh, in that uh, uh, national boat. In the same manner, dito sa Waling Waling, uh, it, it, again, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a symbol and it will be uh, representative of our nation, representative of our people. What qualities do you see? Uh, um, what qualities of the Filipino people and the Filipino nation does Waling Waling represent no. officially? I mean, this should be uh, this should be discussed in, in depth and thoroughly, no? Because we want to make sure that this specific uh, species, sabi nyo nga kanina marami, no? But we want to make sure that this specific species, species is a true representation of the Philippines and its people, no? So ano yung nakikita nyo mga qualities natin na nandito po sa Waling Waling? Well, uh, Mr. Chair, first is uh, this Waling Waling is endemic no? here in the Philippines, especially in the uh, island of Mindanao. So, isa yun sa mga, ano natin, Mr. Chairman. And again, rare din ito talaga masyado. No? Hindi ito basta makikita natin no? na makukuha. Talagang inaingatan ito. And... Uh, Basically, uh, we will uh, raise public uh, consciousness uh, dahil nga rare itong ating walig-waling. And of course, uh, whose effort uh, to really protect and uh, preserve this flower. So I guess uh, you have nito, Mr. Chairman, para lang din sa ating future uh, generations na makikita rin nila and of course, for the protection of this flower. Talagang magandang maganda ito. Uh, ako galing Davao region, isa to sa mga pinagbamayabang namin. Ia, even every kadayawan, the mother of Senator uh, Binay, uh, always invited uh, to to uh, open our uh, flower uh, activity here in kadayawan sa Davao. So, uh, I guess, Mr. Chairman, uh, you yung... Uh, for the protection of this flower and uh, of course for the conservation also so uh that is my point of view regarding this uh waling waling yeah, well well i i kagaya ng sinabi ni uh ni jeremy kanina no it has to be more than being endemic no? and uh uh we're, we're declaring this as a national orchid and the yes. mere word national rep is a is a uh, trigger point that it represents us as a nation. No? Um, so I, I just want to have a deeper discussion on what does it represent? No, what does the, what qualities does that does Waling Waling have that is a true representation of the Philippines and us as a people, both currently and probably historically? No? Um, uh, just like the Balangay, there are a lot of historical representation uh, of us as a people, you know, being a maritime power, being uh, a innovative uh, uh, culture. So, in, dito naman sa Waling Waling, ano yung nakikita niyo na rinirepresent niya? Uh, rinirepresent niya sa atin bilang bansa at bilang pamayanan. Anong, anong nakikita niyo? Because it has to be deeper, no? If we declare this as a national flower, it has to be a deeper um, rationale why we are doing this. And it, we're doing this by law. No? Yes, yes. Mr. Chairman? Uh, be, uh, sir, before we recognize you, uh, I would like to hear from uh, uh, EDL. 
And then later on, we recognize you, Pop, Mr. Rex. Yeah. Um, I guess Mr. Chairman can be best represented, uh, of course, uh, for the I've said, of this uh, Philippine bi uh, biodiversity, no? Dahil siguro, Mr. Chairman, I consider as the, the finest, no? And the most beautiful among all the species na nating uh, orchids na makikita natin sa Philippines. Kaya sabi ko, medyo rare talaga ito. And uh, for me, uh, the most beautiful uh, species of orchids. So maybe, Mr. Chair, uh, to add on this, uh, maybe you could also recognize Mr. Rex Pentespina to add more about the details about the Waling Waling House. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we recognize Mr. Rex. Um, Mr. Chairman, can we can I request that my colleagues at the Philippine Orchid Society be recognized? Uh, they are experts in 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 the waling waling or our orchid species, and we will enlighten you on 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 the waling waling. Uh, Mr. Jun Gulamko is online. Ah, Jun Gulamko. Okay, yeah, we will uh, recognize Mr. Andres Gulamko. Explanator, hindi ko nabasa. Mr. Uh, Golanco. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, tungkol sa qualities ng waling-waling, uh, it represents the Filipinos uh, very uh, significantly because uh, yung qualities na nakikita sa waling-waling, um, mas maganda makita natin sa picture. Uh, I sent up uh, some photographs earlier. Maganda sana kung ma-post sa public at para makita kung ano yung waling-waling. Sir, baka meron kayo dyan. You can share screen. May uh, pinadala namin kanina. Yeah. Wala, hindi na. Uh, uh, can we, uh, yeah. Uh, you can share your screen. Yes. Okay. Ang waling waling, uh, aside from being uh, most uh, attractive, uh, makikita ito sa mga flowers uh, pag uh, na view natin. Uh, <laughs> Can you see the pictures? Uh, wala po. We cannot see uh, anything. Hmm. Share screen po. Share screen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, po. Uh, yeah, yeah. We can see it. Yes, uh. Yeah. Ganda, huh? yung, yung iba rin, yes. That uh, is the albino. And this one is the this one is uh, uh was presented last year during the uh, Philippine Orchid Society show where the Walling Walling uh, uh were in full bloom. Uh this is the albino form of the Walling Walling. As you can see, uh medyo uh spectacular yung kanyang pag flower. Uh, the flowers are held up high, which also represents the Filipinos as being a proud, being a Filipino. Uh, yung flowers kasi niya, maganda yung bearing eh. Okay, can you show the other one? You know, uh, yung tatlong flowers. Yeah. Okay. This one won the best in show in the Philippine Orchid Society uh, 2018 show. Uh, as you can see, marami yung flowers. And the flowers are quite big, uh, around three to four inches, and held up high, so very proud. And uh, it represents the Filipinos quite well with this uh, orchid uh, uh, to be considered as the national orchid, no? 
and um, it has the best finest qualities for best color best uh, best uh, form and the filipinos are always outstanding in all their uh, you, you know achievements meron tayong mga magagaling na singers may magagaling tayong mga mga uh, scientists may mag magagaling tayong sa sports and uh, nangingibabaw and you can see the flowers are held up high and very regal and very proud so these are some of the qualities you can see sa flower ng waling waling representing filipinos so this is just an example so parang pang miss universe sir yes kaya tayo na nanalo sa miss universe kaya tayo na nanalo sa miss universe in fact, uh, ang Waling Waling is one of the most uh, uh, outstanding pagdating sa breeding ng orchids. So, napakaraming hybrids at mga anak na ito. And in fact, even just Waling Waling alone, ngayon nakikita na siya sa maramihang orchid collection kasi maraming mga interested na growers mag-alaga ng waling-waling. And uh, in fact, mas maganda uh, lahat tayo mag-alaga nito because it shows our qualities eh. Being proud and very showy. Talagang mahusay na mahusay sa breeding pa ito. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gulanko. I would like to go back again to uh, Jeremy. No? Um, Jeremy, uh, again, the same the same uh, question. I think uh, you pointed out earlier that it has to be go. It has to be beyond being endemic uh, because it's a symbol. No, it's a national symbol. So what do you see in uh, Waling Waling that represents or truly represents our country and the peoples? Um, just to clarify, Senator, uh, I didn't actually say it has to be beyond uh, concerns about and you know uniqueness and endemicism. Uh, this is just vis-a-vis -vis the Sampaguita, uh, where, which has a, a deep cultural attribute. Um, and I'm just putting all of that information out there. None of this is my, my personal opinion. Um, uh, it's just that uh, if we replace the Sampaguita, we should know what we're, um, uh, uh, what we're uh, well, losing, but... Um, uh, de-emphasize, uh, taking away you know, from, from, from this, this symbol. Um, as to Waling Waling, yes, certainly it is of, of immense value as a flower. It is, um, I'll use the word uh, undeniably again, the queen of Philippine orchid. It's extremely popular and well-loved among uh, collectors and uh, uh, orchid, orchid people uh, worldwide. The beauty is quite apparent. It's been very, it lends itself very well to hybridization. Maybe that's a Filipino quality, how adaptable we are worldwide. Uh, it is delicate and uh, rare um, and, uh, and endangered in, in nature. But uh, under cultivation, it flourishes and adapts quite well maybe we can see something of our national traits in that you know we are vulnerable but we're under adaptable certain conditions we we thrive everywhere um and mix very well uh and yeah the beauty the color um is outstanding uh, so that's maybe aspirational um our color, the color of us as Filipinos as, as a people, we're so colorful. Uh, you know, there, the beauty inherent in, 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 in Filipino uh, identity, I, uh, that's all I could probably say. Um, it's certainly something to be proud of, whether it's a national flower, a national orchid, or neither, but held up as a great species uh, from the Philippines. To share? 
Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mr. Binay. Chair. Uh, yes. Well, diba, technically, um, this bill will already remove the conflict with Sampaguita. Tama po ba? Tama ba, Mr. Chair? Yes, yes. Uh, that, we, is, yeah. that is the... Uh, the win-win solution of uh, Mr. Jeremy uh, to uh, uh, remove that uh, perceived confusion uh, is to declare Waling Waling as the national orchid. Yeah. Um, I, either ki Mr. June Golamco or ki, ki Rex. Um, siguro if you share ko lang in another lifetime. Uh, so masali din ako sa mga ano so in fact I think mga few times na nalo yung yung exhibit namin ni Pipito sa mga shows ng either Philippine Orchid Society or the uh, Horticulture Society. Um, aside from Waling Waling, meron pa bang endemic orchid sa Philippines? Marami. Siguro Jeremy like what? Oh gosh, um... I mean, I you, have, kumbaga, I, uh, close competitor of uh, Waling Waling. I agree. I fully support this bill declaring Waling Waling as a um, national orchid. But, syempre, kailangan i-compare din natin siya dun sa closest competitor niya. Uh, Mr. Golamco or Mr. Rex or anyone who's, uh, uh, who, can, who can answer uh, the query. Kasi hindi, hindi ako sure, ang sang gumay ba, Orchid? Mr. Rex, go ahead po. Yes. Uh, can I uh, add on? Yeah, yes, go ahead, Mr. Gulamko. Thank you. Uh, um, ye, uh, so far, uh, as endemic species, yung waling-waling ang talagang pinaka-spectacular at saka pinaka-showiest. Uh, the other orchids that would come to mind um, uh, is Vanda Luzonica, but it's basically just popular in Luzon, not so much uh, worldwide. Uh, Sangumai is not endemic. It is uh, an indigenous species. It is also found in other Asian countries. So ang um, mas rightful would be the Vanda Sanderiana, which is an endemic species in Mindanao and now shared all over the Philippines and also around the world because of the mass production uh, done by the uh, fellow orchids in Mindanao. And then uh, now, uh, marami na siya. Hindi na siya uh, nakakatakot na ma mauubusan sa forest. So I believe na walang malapit na com competition amongst the other orchids species na very popular and equally very showy and then adaptable pa thank you no wala mr chair uh, yes yes santa yeah. kasi kasi diba at, at one point naging problema itong uh, naging ano siya endangered species itong waling waling eh at the moment ba meron pa rin makikita in the wild. Kasi alam ko, for a time, halos uh, uh, sa lab na lang yung mga napoproduce na waling-waling eh. Nancy, naka, uh, uh, Senator Nancy, you're on mute. Uh, Napropagate na ba natin ito ulit um, dun sa kanilang natural habitat? Like what we did, like yung ginagawa nila Rex sa uh, um, Philippine Eagle. Meron bang ganong programa for Waling-Waling? Uh, Breeding-wise, marami na sa uh, laboratories. In fact, in Mindanao, I think uh, uh, Malagos Garden uh, and other uh, orchid growers in Mindanao have... Uh, included waling waling in their mass production so medyo marami na siya by the millions in fact and even in luzon uh, other growers have also started producing waling waling and they have them in the millions also so medyo marami na siya right now but you can also find uh, 
the species in the habitat, but uh, we are not free to uh, uh, give you the exact location para at least ma, ma ensure natin yung safety na hindi makukuha itong mga mga re remaining plants. Medyo marami pa rin na sa forest. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ako, I'm ready to move. <laughs> sandali, sandali. Nancy, hindi pa tayo. <laughs> Gusto mo bigyan ka ni Pipito ng waling-waling. Hindi, -waling Mr. Chair, papagalita. Papagalita na ako ng mami ko, no? <laughs> <laughs> We have another, we want to hear also from uh, NHCP, Mr. Alvin Alcid. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Again, good morning, everyone. Um, siguro just to add to the discussion, Mr. Chair, with regards dun kanina, kasi yung sampagita, your, your, your query kanina, yung kung pwede yung papalitan, no? Let me read, sir, your our position on that on this matter, sir, no? In the case of House Bill number 4952, we have originally expressed reservations on account of the current national flower, the Sampagita, uh, as, as mentioned, was declared by uh, Governor General Frank Murphy, because it has already gained significant cultural value within the national consciousness on account of its use in garlands, used to honor visitors, graduates, academic and athletic achievers, other esteemed persons, as well as icons of Catholic saints and the departed. Uh, but now, nag-iba na nga po yung title niya. Uh, before kasi when it, was, when it was filed at the house, ayun siya, ano, ano, national flower, no? other national flower. So now, it's uh, titled as uh, um, National Orchid. So with this change po, uh, the NHCP does not object to the bill anymore. Kami po yung before in 2011 also, we objected to that bill. Pero ngayon po, iba na kasi yung title niya, National Orchid. So... We do not object to the bill anymore, Mr. Chair. Yeah, but uh, you don't see this as a circumvention? Uh, hindi naman po, Mr. Chair. Uh, hindi hindi po, eh. uh, I hindi just want to, uh, ano lang, uh, I just want to uh, play devil's advocate. You don't see this as a circumvention? Yes. Eh, pareho, ang, ang, from a layman point of view, I'm, ako, I'm not an expert. Si Nancy is an expert in this. But pareho naman bulaklak yan eh. From my point of view, it's the same. No? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. oh, okay. yun po, yun nga rin yung nabanggit kanina. We were together with Director Barnes during that hearing, and that's the win win solution that came out during that hearing at the house. Uh, let me go to another idea, sir. No, kasi yun yung issue with regards to. To laws, no. In general, po, no. When we, we when we pass laws declaring this and that is a national this and that. Ito po siguro yung nagiging. Um, uh, let me let me cite an example. Um, we all know that we we recognize Jose Rizal as our national hero, but do you know that wala naman pong batas declaring him as a national hero? Why do we then consider him as a national hero? Because collectively, no, national yung national consciousness natin. Tinanggap natin siya. So. Parang yun po yung medyo usually nagiging um, discussion within the NHGP. Um, when we, this is not the first time that we have this, because we, in the past, yung, yeah, you mentioned we have the national sport, the national bird, the national flower, national tree. So yun yung argument niyo, Mr. Chair, kanina, eh, what does it represent the Filipino? Yun yung talagang medyo mahirap then on our end no, to, 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 uh, to look into. Kasi... Um, minsan you have to, minsan yung tao na rin, ang Pilipino na rin nagsasabi, this is for, for us, this is the national, no? Yun po yung medyo, again, yun, yun po, Mr. Chair, I, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, honestly, I don't understand, pero, oh. um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> para kasi parang paikot-ikot eh, but you know, what I'm driving at is, I don't want this bill, I don't want to endorse this bill because we circumvented the veto by declaring a national orchid. I want it on the, to endorse this bill on the basis that it represents the Filipino people and the country. That's why it has to be a deeper discussion than just changing it to a national orchid. That's why I'm asking the experts, uh, what does it represent or how does it represent the country or the people? Because 
uh, we don't want to pass a law. This is a law. Huh? And then when they looked at the transcripts, sinabi nila, ah, pumasay itong batas kasi pinalitan to National Orchid. Hindi naman maganda doon. No? Uh, we want to make sure that this law uh, surpasses the symbolism or the criteria for symbolisms. No? That's why I want to uh, discuss that with the ex experts. In the, and in the uh, explanatory note of the author, he wrote there, it symbolizes the high aspirations of the Filipino, resiliency, being proud as a Filipino, independence, and being peaceful. So these are all the uh, symbolisms that the principal author mentioned in his explanatory note, which was vetoed eventually. Um, but I want to know from the experts, uh, from your point of view and from your research, it has to be a deeper research, no? Because, like I said, we cannot pass a law because we circumvented it and renamed it to a national orchid. We passed a law because it truly represents us as a people. And this is a national symbol. More, more, more than the discussion of a national orchid, it's, an, it's a symbol. No? So that's what I wanted to uh, uh, discuss with the experts. Uh, may I add on? Mr. Yeah, yes, Mr. Golanko. Uh, yeah. Uh, when it comes to the important uh, reason, uh, when you ask a, um, a lot of Filipinos or almost every every Filipino about uh, kung ano yung pinakamaganda or anong orchids yung alam ninyo, ang sasagutin nila ay waling-waling. So recognize talaga itong waling-waling as an orchid. And it is basically... A Philippine orchid. So, alam nila Filipino, uh, Filipino orchid ito galing sa Philippines. So, dun pa lang nare-recognize na ng maraming Filipinos na pagdating sa magandang orchids, waling-waling ang sagot. In fact, meron ng song, a, a kanta na, na composed way back, uh, I think, even before I was born, meron na tungkol sa waling-waling. So, it's a very popular orchid all over the Philippines and now even worldwide. And it's being recognized also from the uh, orchids from abroad as a Filipino orchid. So, recognized talaga siyang Filipino siya. Yes, uh, Idi, Idi Al. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I will speak... Uh... Not for NCCA, uh, but uh, I will speak, uh, Mr. President, now as uh, part of the Kadaya Once a Festival uh, Executive Committee member for nine years. Uh, ito po yung talagang dinadayo, Mr. Chair, dito sa Davao City uh, during Kadaya And one of our uh, tourism arrival uh, during Kadaya eh coming from Manila, Cebu, or yung, uh, yung mga from outside the Philippines. Ano po yung pinupuntahan nila sa Davao sa Kadayawan? Ito po yun, Mr. Chairman, di waling-waling, or yung ating mga orchids. So, hindi po pwede mawala namin uh, during the Kadayawan Festival. Ito po yung uh, agro-industrial fair. Kasi po, isa, isa din ito sa attraction, isa rin itong pinupuntahan ng uh, mga Filipino from different places to see no, the beauty and of course, gusto din nilang magka, magka, magka roon ng waling-waling. For me, Mr. Chair, sabi nga ni Mr. Tulam ko, uh, lahat ng Filipino, lalo na po yung mahilig sa bulaklak, talagang Gustong gustong makita yung waling waling. And we are very happy here in Davao region na marami dito rin. And during the Kadayawan, yan din yung aming talagang inaayos at ginagawa ng way. Uh, especially now with Mayor Sara na we consider as one of the pillar or, or the four uh, icons yung ating waling waling here in Davao City. So I do... Uh, 
agree, Mr. Chair, in that uh, this flower, this waling waling, is recognized by Filipinos. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, thank you, Senator Nancy. And just to add, the hindi lang naman sa kadayawa nakikita yung waling waling. In fact, yung Philippine Orchid Society, yung isang media show nyo, tinataon nyo talaga dun sa panahon kung saan nag-bloom yung waling-waling eh. So, hindi lang ito sa Davao nakikita. In fact, yung mga orchid enthusiasts dito sa Manila, uh, inaabangan na yan tuwing magkakaroon ng show yung Philippine Orchid Society. In, I don't know if it's end of August or first week of September. Usually, yung mid-year exhibit ng Philippine Orchid Society. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Nancy. And, um, okay. Uh, no, no. No, no. Uh, Just to add, um, yeah, yes, Nancy. Well, I guess, siguro kailangan din natin, um, uh, we need to own this whiling whiling. Kasi baka unahan na naman tayo nung mga, uh, uh, ASEAN neighbors natin, uh, uh, kumbaga sa kanila mapupunta yung um, claim to fame when it comes to this uh, orchid. Dahil um, way back when I was still active, yun yung nagiging problema. Lagi tayong nauunahan ng ating mga uh, uh, neighbors here in uh, um, Southeast Asia, lalong lalo na ng Bangkok. Kaya I think isa din dun sa uh, kahalagahan para pag na-declare ito as a national orchid, uh, we can use um, resources to propagate and make and, parang, and own this orchid as part of um, the Philippines. Parang ganun yung magiging consequence of uh, declaring it as a national orchid. Thank you, Senator Nancy. Um... Actually, I, I, I agree with uh, the suggestion of uh, uh, Executive Director Al Alejandre that uh, th there should be a much more robust discussion in the bill. No, The bill is only one page, and um, it only declares it as a national orchid. But I do want to see a much uh, robust discussion on why it should be declared as a national orchid. Um, sabi nga kanina, tinanungan ni Nancy ilan ang uh, uh, orchids in the Philippines. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, no, this is based on research, there are about 3,500 flower species. Tama po ba, Mr. Golanco? So, na-endemic sa atin. So, one out of the 3,500 is, is quite a, uh, a, a uh, very distinct selection. So talagang we need to highlight why, no, out of the 3,500, siya yung ating national flower. So, um, and uh, I, I want to embed that in the law. So that those who will read the law will see why, no? Hindi lang nakita nila, ay, sinircumvent natin to dahil uh, inavito ito. Eh. Ay, hindi, hindi maganda yung ganun eh. Um, we need to have a much more robust discussion um, in the law, uh, as, as well as um, uh, in our conversations now. But uh, I do appreciate the uh, explanatory note of the author, sinabi nga niya doon, uh, high aspirations of the Filipino people, resiliency of the Filipino people, proud. No, kanina napakita nga ni Mr. Gulanko, uh, independence and uh, peacefulness, no, because uh, it can coexist uh, with uh, any other species. So, and then Jeremy also add adaptability and uh, colorfulness. You know? uh, and I, I, I've just been reading here, Senator, and uh, the sweet fragrance. So as a people, we can also claim that attribute. Mabango ba tayo? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, of course. So um, we, with that, I uh, uh, would like to request, no, and um, 
uh, I'd like to request uh, NCCA and uh, the three agencies, but primarily NCCA, um, National Museum, and the uh, National Historical Commission, uh, a heavy research and deliberation on the representation of this flower as to how it represents us as a Filipino people. Um, of course, we have di discussed it here in a very broad manner, but uh, I want to uh, formalize it through a position paper from NCCA. And then if uh, National Museum and National Historical Commission can also contribute through their own position paper, mas maganda huyon. And the other resource persons. Uh, like I said, um, ako, I'm in, in favor of this because nga, it's, uh, it's endemic and it's beautiful and um, um, uh, it represents some qualities of our nation, but we need to formalize that. Eh? And I will take your advice, uh, uh, E.D. Alejandre, that we will embed that in the law. No? Para mas robust naman. Pag binasa mo yung batas, pakikita mo kaagad kung bakit. No? So we will uh, 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 approve this bill uh, subject to the submissions from NCCA National Commission. Uh, National Historical Commission and uh, um, uh, National Museum so that uh, um, we will uh, embed your comments into the bill. So with that, uh, I will request uh, Senator Nancy Binay to uh, make that motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve uh, um, as Waling, declaring Waling Waling as the National Orchid of the Philippines um, uh, so, uh, prior to the submission of um, position papers from our resource person. Thank you, Senator Minay. So uh, the committee will uh, approve the endorsement of uh, House Bill number House Bill number uh, 4952, an act declaring Waling Waling Orchid as the National Orchid of the Philippines, subject to the formal submission of uh, the National Historical Commission, NCCA, and the National Museum uh, that will uh, have the contents on um, their, 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 their position paper on uh, why Waling Waling uh, is a true symbol and representation of the Filipino people and our nation. And also the other other resource persons, feel free to submit to us your position papers. Po. So uh, with that, I thank everyone. Ah, yes, Nancy. Nancy. Senator Nancy. Uh, I think malapit na magbulaklak yung mga waling, waling tama po ba, Rex? Yes, magos. Baka it's best the, if you can send a sample kay Chair para makita niya talaga kung gaano kaganda yung Waling Waling. Maganda naman, Nancy. Yes. Yes, it's uh, now it's uh, flowering season now. And um, in time we uh, we send the uh, uh, flowering Waling Waling to the Chairman for his appreciation. Uh, bibigay ko sa girlfriend ko para hindi na ako iiwan. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and I think it is also timely. Uh, maybe this is a blessing in disguise because, of course, this, the bill stands a better chance of getting approved because our president is from Mindanao. No? And I think no man will appreciate it more than our president. No? He's quite uh, familiar with this uh, species. So, um, so I think we have a very good chance of getting this approved at this time. So blessing in disguise there in po. Yeah, we have two years to do it, sir. So once again, thank you very much for your time to, to uh, our uh, cultural and uh, heritage uh, agencies. Marami salamat po for your time. Of course, to Senator Nancy, you stayed with us until the end. Marami salamat po uh, for your participation. So this meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you.